back out chasing brim again over the weekend. The water quality was really poor. Uh, all the storm water and flooding has um, caused the river to be pretty murky and it's flowing pretty fast as well. I went and hit it with some vibes at the change of the tide. Vibes are my preferred lure over the winter where you can get those brim which are sitting down really nice and deep. I'm going to run through some of the key considerations that I make when using vibes uh, chasing black brim and silver brim. First off, what blade size and colour to use. I tend to use the smallest blade you can find. So most of them are around that sort of 30mm. Anywhere from 30 to 40 is okay. I would go 30 all the time if I could though. Today I've got the uh, ZX30 and I've got it in Black Knight which is, um, I used to be my favorite, black, but I found that color's not as important as I thought it was. A few months ago, I grabbed a couple of pink vibes from the bargain bin, and they worked just as good. It was a um, one of the Savage Gear vibes in 4.5 gram, and it was pretty much fluoro pink. And then I caught some more on uh, blue TT vibes, different color ZXs. Um, in general, if you have to choose a colour, I'd probably say black, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. The size of the trebles that you use are really important. You probably want nothing bigger than size 14. Uh, the ZX has the assist hooks that are really small as well, and they're actually really good because you don't snag up as much when you're casting really close to the poles. Unless you're vertically jigging on a kayak, I would recommend opening your spool as you're bringing in the lure. This will help it keep uh, down low in the water column as you're bringing it back towards you. Otherwise, you're literally just winding the lure higher and higher each revolution. So this comes into tide considerations too. Um, so this was an outgoing tide and the water was flowing away from me. So I was required to open up the spool a lot more to get it into the target area. Otherwise, it would just float past the top of the poles. If the tide was coming in the other way, I would have to cast out further and let it sink as it comes towards me. So I'll run through a few examples. So on the weekend, the tide was running away from me. So I, I basically just dropped the lure just in front of my feet and let it drift past the poles with an open spool. I was here a few months ago when it was incoming tide, so I had to cast out towards the end of the poles and basically let the lure sink towards me, so I didn't have to open up the spool as much. Oh yeah! Sometimes if the tide's really strong and it's flowing really fast, it makes it really difficult oh, it's a nice uh, one. to get into the target area and you're probably going to lose lures on the poles. In a place like this with all the structure, you want to get the lure as close to the pole as you can pretty much cast as close as you can without snagging up. There will also be a lot of mussels and other sort of barnacles um, below the water level that you need to worry about. So the poles are gonna be a little bit wider um, uh, for the further down they are as well. Particularly in the winter, nice slow retrieve and really small hops. Only you need to go up a few centimeters each time. I like four pound fishing for brim but in a place like this I've sort of changed it a little and I've gone up to eight pound just because I got sick of donating lures. Eight pound gives you a little bit more grunt to pull them away from the poles and if you brush up against the muscles you're less likely to get cut off straight away like four pound. If you want to risk it four pound will probably get you more bites though. Nice golden slab on the ZX measured up to about 34. If you've got any more questions about the gear that I'm using or how I use the lures, feel free to ask any questions in the comments section. 
I've got a heap of other videos about Brim, so please subscribe if you're interested.